Okay, so welcome to the first installment of jQuery 1.4 Hotness with Paul Irish. Um, there's going to be a few of these installments, and in this one, we're going to be talking about the changes and improvements to the live method and the closest method. So let's right get, get right into it. So with live, um, awesome function, basically to recap kind of what it does, it uses event delegation um, to let you bind to any events that fire in the page. Um, the, the big advantages of this are that any elements that are dynamically inserted into the page will also capture this functionality. And then also, um, event delegation is, is, is very efficient for when you have multiple, like many, many elements on a page that all need to get the same functionality uh, to be executed on a certain event. So here's a basic example. And this is something that, that we've been able to do ever since 1.3. So we basically want all anchors on a page that are linking to you know, a hash anchor to smooth scroll to that destination whenever you click on them. So I'm just using a selector, using attribute selectors, um, live.click, and, um, and then this next statement basically finds the destination, grabs the offset from the top of the page, and then we animate the scroll top of HTML and body down to where it is. And of course, we prevent the default behavior of that click, which would be jumping in the page. So this is stuff we've been able to do. But let me talk about what we have that's brand new in 1.4. The first, we have some new events that are now supported. So change is supported. So here in this example, um, let me make this a little bit bigger for everyone. Uh, we're going to attach some functionality to the change event of all selects. So um, any drop downs that are dynamically inserted to the page will get this. And inside our handler, we're basically going to just console log out the element uh, that was changed and the new value. Um, I will point out that if you have been doing this in 1.3 and you're like, you go into Firefox and it, it works, you're like, I thought this was already supported. Um, there were a lot of things like that where it seemed to work already, but um, everything is, is perfect across browser across the browsers that jQuery supports now. So all is good. <clears throat> the other big one is submit. So uh, any forms that are dynamically inserted, you can just kind of watch uh, that event as it fires up. Um, and that's about it. Focus in and focus out are also now supported in live. And you might not be familiar with these events um, because they're, they're new to jQuery. Um, they are functionally equivalent to focus and bind, focus and blur, sorry. Um, but the distinction is that um, the focus and blur events, as specified by the W3 DOM event spec, do not bubble. And because of event delegation leverages the bubbling of events, um, it would be incorrect to make those events bubble. But the focus in and focus out events do bubble. So this is why um, they're used like this. It might be a little confusing, but that's how it is. Um, from what I hear, we'll be seeing in 1.4.1 uh, focus and blur in uh, the the real ones supported in live. And they'll just basically map to focus in and focus out. So just a little bit of magic to make it easier for everyone that might get a little confused by that. So uh, in this example, uh, we basically just check the validation um, of, of this text field whenever we click out of it or tab out of it, and maybe we throw something up. I don't know. Cool. So let me take this kind of to the next level. Um, this is a uh, placeholder plugin. And uh, just to kind of explain this, placeholders are what is basically called, it has a lot of names, but it's a uh, input field that when you click into it, it removes the default value, like it's default text, right? You blur out of it and it puts it back. And so like everyone's written functionality for this before. And this is actually something that is now going to be supported in HTML5. And currently in, in Google Chrome and Safari, this is already supported. 
um, the placeholder attribute is used, um, just the text that's in there is used. And so this is just HTML on this page right here. This is Mark Pilgrim's really good dive into HTML5 uh, book, online book. Um, so here we have a plugin that basically um, supports this functionality for every, any browser that doesn't support the native HTML5 placeholder. So standard plugin, right up at the top, we're basically going to see if there already is support in this browser for placeholder. And if there is, then we're just going to return out of here. And then here's really the meat of it. Um, we're going to go through, oops, don't even need that. Uh, we're going to go through all of the uh, elements that were passed in. We're going to take the attribute placeholder and store it into the data cache. Um, and then here we are using live. Focus in, when someone clicks into it, we're going to check the current value uh, against what's in the cache. And if it's equal, then we're going to clear it out because the placeholder is in there. And then whenever they blur out of the field, focus out of the field, we we're going to see if it's still empty. If it's empty, we're going to drop it right back in, uh, pulling it from the data cache. So uh, this, of course, will work with um, all elements added to the page. So um, up here is kind of the usage, which is uh, I can just call it on input attribute placeholder, and um, this will work uh, forever and always. OK. Um, the other two events that we've now, we now have support for in 1.4 with the live method are mouse enter and mouse leave. Um, Mouse enter and mouse leave are actually the events that the hover uh, method leverages. So some people might think that uh, mouse en uh, sorry, mouse in and mouse out are used, and that's incorrect. It's mouse enter and mouse leave. They're a bit more friendly. Uh, so here we have an example. Um, this is actually new functionality as well, being able to pass, attach a handler to multiple events at the same time. So when anyone uh, mouse enters or mouse leaves into this hover box. Uh, we're going to run this this handler. First, we check to see if our event type is mouse enter. Um, and then, basically, the functionality of, of this right here is we're just going to set the color of the background color of the box to red if you're entering and blue if you're leaving. So uh, this is uh, how you can support hover functionality with dynamically created elements. One of the other additions to live is the ability to pass a data object when the binding is made. Um, this, uh, so what this basically looks like is passing an object right after specifying the event type. So here we're going to create a, a reference to the time that we bound this. And then inside the handler, we're going to get the time that it's executing. So that might be you know, 10 seconds later whenever someone clicks down. And then compare that time with what was originally bound. Um, we grab that using uh, what we've seen. This is all functionality that has been in bind, the bind method. Um, E.data refers to the event object and the bind time. And um, we figure out how many seconds it's been since uh, this event was bound versus when it was finally clicked. So uh, that's now supported in 1.4 as well. Custom events uh, also work with, with live. So um, the benefit here is, of course, uh, dynamically created elements, multiple elements. Um, and it works just the same as everything else. If you're familiar with custom events, uh, you get the benefits of live here. So uh, we're going to create a custom event. And this functionality is going to happen. And uh, at any point, we can just trigger that custom event on all Ps, and that will do that. Right. Now, I want to point out a nice performance optimization that you can make. Um, because live works with event delegation, what it's doing is it's, um, for instance, with a click event, um, it's going to capture the element that you clicked on. And that might be like an A tag, but there's a lot of things around it, right? So, so inside the jQuery internals, it's basically going up the parent tree, checking each parent against the selector that you passed in, in this case, A external. So it's going to see if the parent of that A tag is A external, whatever. <coughs> um, a performance uh, optimization that you can make is passing a context in. 
So here we're going to pass a context into live. And this is um, the DOM element uh, that has an ID of content. So the nice thing here is that uh, if the jQuery uh, inside live, basically if it determines that what was clicked on is outside of the, the context, it's going to quit a lot faster than if this hasn't been passed in. So this is a way to speed up um, when you have a lot of event delegation on the page. And if you can, if you can scope the um, selector to a context, um, and this is how you do it with, with passing a DOM element, um, it'll definitely reduce the amount of function calls that are occurring with every click. Okay, so because that uses closest, let me talk to you a little bit about the closest method. Um, we've seen two new changes to closest. One is passing an array of selectors into closest. This is a little crazy, so bear with me. So we start out by grabbing the body, and we pass into closest an array of body and HTML. What it returns is an array of these little objects. And uh, inside the object is a selector string and a reference to an element. Um, so uh, this is an interesting return type, and you might not know why this is practical. But uh, if you're doing a lot of event delegation inside your plugins, um, you, you might want to leverage this. Uh, John Resig actually had a really nice post explaining this new method of, of closest and supporting multiple selectors with closest um, on his blog on ejohn.org. They should check out if you want to read more about why this is great. And um, lastly, the um, similar thing, which is I was talking about passing a context into live. The same context is used with closest. So here, um, it's, it's the same example, I, I suppose. Um, I can basically constrain the context of my search for this div.post in my closest traverse call to anything that's within content. Um, this will be a lot faster than if I had just omitted this. So certainly optional, no need to add this in, but if you're looking to eke out extra um, bits of performance, it's a nice thing to add. So um, thank you for joining this installment. Uh, and coming soon, we have a lot more. So please tune into the next uh, installments of jQuery 1.4 Hotness. Uh, we're going to be talking about setter methods, the new additions to them, uh, all sorts of new tricks with bind, proxy, the new stuff with traversing manipulation, AJAX enhancements, um, some of the new, new utility functions, and also have a discussion about what are the things that might break if you're upgrading from 1.3 to 1.4. Nothing huge, but we're just going to review them in detail so you can make sure that you're, you'll be sailing free. So thank you for tuning in.